Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the live stream, welcome to all of you over on YouTube and a special welcome to those of you watching us on Facebook. This is the first time we're actually live on Facebook for one of these as well. Hopefully it's working, if it's not please do let us know. Uh, Abby is watching it diligently mm -hmm. and is currently saying it's working so hopefully it is but if not please do let us know. Uh, and you may have noticed we're joined by a special guest today. So as well as Simon and I we have the amazing wildlife artist who is Richard Simmons. Would you like to say hello, Thanks. Richard? <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm, I'm honored to be, uh -huh. second time I've done this with you guys. It is. Second it is time. Indeed. They've had me back twice, I. Thank you. <laughs> this will be the last uh, time. The last time, the last yes, time. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know Richard, Richard is an amazing wildlife artist. Uh, he's done some absolutely spectacular um, paintings and has worked with quite a lot of very famous celebrities but not just that but he's also helped us out a lot as well so he used to do a lot of our sort of tree climbing arborist nest work he's helped out on deer rescues um, he's done a couple of if you look down in the bottom left hand corner you may see a robin perched on his head um, he's helped out on <laughs> helped out with us on quite a few rescues um, and he's a long time friend of the charity and as we get a bit further on in this live stream, we'll start to talk about what you saw in the holding card for this video, which I know a few of you are interested in, um, which is an incredible drawing of a hedgehog that Mr. Simmons has done. But so before we start off, <laughs> play la play nicely, children. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> he's always so mean to me. Oh, he is, it's not just yeah. me that he's mean to, he's mean to every single know, person, Laurie. including Richard. Laurie's, and especially Laurie's Richard. eyes light up when I'm coming over because he knows that he's going to be off target a bit when I'm here. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, this evening, as you may have guessed, is specifically around the hedgehog. So the hedgehog was voted Britain's best loved mammal. Uh, it's a fairly uncontroversial species, I don't know many people that don't like hedgehogs. Uh, but unfortunately, they are in decline. There's been a 96% decline of hedgehogs since the 1950s and we are facing the very real possibility of urban extinction within the next few years, which is a terrifying statistic when you think of it. Uh, so in terms of why, Simon, why do you think uh, the hedgehogs are in decline? I only work here, I've no idea of any of these facts at all, you know, 40 years in and more senile than I was when I started. Um, there's so many reasons why the hedgehog in decline, but they're all based around mankind at the end of the day. I mean, we've got more roads, we've got more people, we've got less habitat, we've got insecticides, we've got pesticides. All these sort of things are just not conducive to have hedgehogs around. There are urban hedgehogs at the moment, but of course, because they are urban, they're very close to roads, much closer than they are in the rural areas, so they're in trouble. All these factors, all man-based, um, and this is what we're trying to address. But it is possible, we can address it if we work very hard with them. Um, there's a way we overwinter a lot of hedgehogs, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But um, it's just really a, a bit of a, a flagship for the other wildlife. All wildlife's in decline massively, over 50% down in the UK. And here we are supposed to be one of the biggest animal lover countries in the world, and yet we're the most depleted in nature in the world as well, which is, pretty scary to be honest but it's because urban spread really has caused the lack of habitat so lots of things to talk about and I'm sure we will get to most of them during the session. <laughs> yes uh, as Simon was saying uh, the biggest issue that we've got is of course mankind so it's not just the fact that we're, we're urbanizing we're taking over previous hedgehog habitat and we're boxing in our gardens so hedgehogs can't they move up to about a mile mile and a half each night uh, and if we box in our gardens, unfortunately, they can't find each other. And if they can't find each other, there's no more hedgehogs. So it's not just things like that, but it's also things that we don't necessarily think about. So litter, for example, uh, you leave a can out, it's not crushed. A hedgehog will quite easily crawl into there to try and find food and can't get back out again. Uh, if we have sort of chain link fences around our properties as well, hedgehogs will try and crawl through those. They can't go backwards because the spines block them going in and then people like us have to go out and rescue them uh, and that's if they're lucky enough to be found. Uncovered drains, you tend to get hogs falling down there as well. For those of you who've seen a couple of our recent YouTube videos, we've rescued a number of hedgehogs down drains, one recently, um, as well as this little guy who got stuck in a discarded fencing joint, which is something we've not really seen before. 
And then another one that's quite topical at this time of year is of course bonfires. So for those of you who do have bonfires or are planning bonfires, please make sure that before you light it, you move the entire pile to another location, or if you can't do that, check it thoroughly before lighting. Hedgehogs love bonfires, it's a perfect place for them to sit and stay and be comfy. And unfortunately, if you don't check it, we get it every single year. Um, if you light it, the hedgehog's inside, they can't get out in time. Every year we get burnt hedgehogs in at the hospital, so please, please do check that one out. So they're really in trouble. Hedgehogs are always in trouble. Um, you had your first experience with a hedgehog, didn't you, recently? I wouldn't say my first experience. <laughs> I've seen them before. Your uh, first close-up. My experience. first close-up, yeah. So um, this guy over here, it's a bit complicated, it's because he's over here, but you're over there. Um, we're two mm -hmm. metres apart, by the way, which is the most important thing we have to say. Um, we are all social we, distancing. And we're social distancing, exactly. And um, that's the best way to be around Simon. <laughs> a bit of social distance. <laughs> um, no, Simon said... Came just, to me and he I'm said, just, I'm just adding these up. Sorry, how many points do you get? How many points do I get? So that's number one to me. <laughs> Simon asked me, he said, Will you stop drawing those? Well, I won't say what he said, those tigers and leopards and elephants and lions. He said, Draw me a hedgehog. And I'm Simon, I'm like, I don't, I don't really know if I can do a hedgehog. They're not kind of, they're not very appealing. And you know, as in a drawing point of view, they're very appealing animals. Don't get me wrong by that. They just, they just look like a ball of spines. And he kept saying, no, no, I need to do a hedgehog. They're so, in such danger. And everybody who knows Simon knows that he, he pressurizes you. Pressure, 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 and then you give in. And I didn't give in, as in. I was just going to draw a ball of, of hedgehog. I thought the only way I'm going to do a hedgehog is if you can see its face little feet and make it look an appealing because as an artist what you want to do is you want to create something that's appealing that people are going to like um, and so just a ball of spines or, or whatever are they called spines or they are, they spines, are spines. Um, I just wouldn't be a very attractive thing to do so I wanted the feet so I said no 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 it's so unnatural you can't have a hedgehog on its back with its feet showing and I said well I'm sorry Simon I'm, I either do it my way or no way <laughs> so, that's uh, another point yeah, no my way, way. so um, I did and, and I came here and they, they <laughs> lent me a gorgeous little hedgehog um, it was what, five, uh, how many kilograms uh, was he? It was he probably was, about four, 450, 500 450, grams. That's right, and I took him home for the weekend, not Simon, but the hedgehog, and um, in a hutch, and um, I had, what, three days of this hedgehog, and got to, to study and look after him, feed him, I was a little boy, um, and I did the other thing that Simon says never do, is never ever name an animal, <laughs> so I had to name the animal Ben, because... <laughs> I like Ben. I mean, it's a good name for a boy. It's quite a boy to say. Uh, yeah, I did everything. Simon, I took a picture of the hedgehog upside down, its little feet showing, and its little nose, and its little eyes, and I gave it a name. And I've done a drawing of a hedgehog, first time in my life, and it was quite challenging, I've got to say, because I'm used to elephants and things like that, and but the little spines on the hedgehog were quite tricky. But I've done it, and we're going to reveal it tonight. I think. Oh, yeah, so. All will be revealed, all will be revealed in, due course. in due course. Heaven help us all. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think, to be honest, that would be an excellent time to start revealing what Mr. Simmons has been up to for the past couple of weeks. Oh, now? Oh, right. Oh, no, not, yet you, not yet with you. Not yet with you. Don't you touch oh, anything, oh, Richard. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're, we're going to tease this in. So. Luckily, Richard also does quite a lot of photography and videography as well, uh, and amazingly filmed this rather lovely time lapse from the start to the end, and then we will reveal the final print. So, here we go. Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> so, how was this to draw, Richard? Well, I always usually start off with the eyes. Um, I just think if you can get the eyes and the nose right, then the rest of it should follow. And we've got these lovely little black beady eyes and a little wet nose. So I just kind of went in first and, uh, and did that. And then you've got this whole bundle of spines around, I'll go to a quick jump. <laughs> it didn't happen quite that fast. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I, I didn't want to put too much detail in there's, there's a point where you don't want to over detail pencil drawings, but you just have to kind of put enough, enough detail in to suggest the spines incredibly tricky things to draw as you can imagine they're overlapping each other and there's different layers so I think really it was just a case of just putting in enough detail but not 
overcooking it, so you leave something to the imagination. But uh, that's the end result. Everything Simon didn't want <laughs> was a curled up hedgehog <laughs> with its feet. <laughs> but I, I um, took about two or three hundred photographs and I showed my family and a few friends and um, we decided that that was probably the most appealing shot. Um, so that was the reason I used that one. I hope you guys like it because certainly I've never done a hedgehog before, so um, yeah. It's going to run off the shelves like hot potatoes or prickly hedgehogs, one or the other. Um, <laughs> but, uh, we'll, we'll be teasing that one in later on. We'll be um, hopefully um, offering a couple for you to, to bid on. Um, and we have also with us the original. I've never, in all my years of knowing Richard and his artwork, go to his website. Richard, website address? Oh, richardsimmons.co.uk and that's <laughs> Simmons with a Y, S-Y-M-O-N-D-S. So we'll go to his We'll put that down in the comments. He's got the most amazing library or, or imagery of all his animals, some of his big cats, the elephants. I mean, everything he does is, is beautiful. I mean, he's probably one of, I think, one of the best wildlife artists is in he, the world today. Am I hearing um, this right? Uh, that's probably the last compliment I'm ever going to pay. <laughs> I mean, like, it's certainly the last time he, we're ever going to be on, usually say on together. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a hell of an art. I mean, I'd love to be able to draw like that. Um, I've sadly, on his all his uh, Twitter channels and Facebook channels recently, he's also been plucking, playing with his G-string quite a lot. Um, he's uh, he's been playing his guitar like crazy as he goes into lockdown. He's trying to, I think he's trying to make people turn him off because I mean he keeps playing this guitar. He's actually quite good at that as well. So that's another embarrassment. Um, it's going to be a guitar against trumpet one day, Richard, because I'm louder <laughs> oh, than no. you. Are. Are you oh no, oh no, I resign. <laughs> but no, Actually, Laurie I mean, plays the trumpet too, then, Laurie. You're a trumpeter. I, I don't play the trumpet, actually. No, I the play. Flute. Flute. I play the flute, yeah. Flute. And you have something He plays a definitely. very good fool. He does play a good fool, uh -huh. Laurie. No, brilliant, brilliant fool. So, yeah, I mean, he's a talented man. I think all, all artisty type people are very creative. Richard certainly is. Um, but he's also very good at the rescues. I mean, we get quite a lot of tree rescues. He does those with us. Um, I think when we went out and we did our first. Uh, PTSing of a deer that took him a little bit by surprise. Um, that was a bit, it, it's horrendous. The first time is always the worst time, um, but it, it's never nice to do it. But if you see an animal that's going to die very slowly, you know there's no chance of saving it. Putting it to sleep in, in milliseconds is obviously the only solution for it, but it, it's quite tough. It's mm. quite tough to see. Um, and I think that affected Richard as it did me well, we and both, does me every time. Yeah, we both burst into tears, I remember. I only burst into tears because I looked at you, so um, that was definitely cool. not for any other reason. There we are. So we're going to try to get him to do some more British wildlife because British wildlife is endangered and he lives in England, so he should concentrate on the British wildlife first, I think. So what are you going to do next, Richard? On air, live, <laughs> you've got to commit to something else at some point. <laughs> Ant, I'm going to draw you an ant. <laughs> you've I'm already done that. hedgehog. No, you've done fox. <laughs> do you done fox. No, you did badger. I've done you? fox. I've done badger. I've done hedgehog. Um, the baby badgers. Swan. Yeah. Baby? baby badgers. I've done badgers. Baby badgers. Yeah. I've seen the baby the swan badgers actually as well. Swan. Thanks, yeah. Laurie. So what else? I mean, you know, what else? Should we see how this goes first? <laughs> yeah, it'll go well. It'll go well. Do you want to see the original? Am I? Do, did you? Is he allowed you to show it yet, sir? Laurie? Yeah, um, feel free to show it on there. So the original, uh, we're going to auction the original over on Richard's social media channels over the next oh. couple of days. So this is the original print, the original. Uh, it's a bit shiny design. because Absolutely it's, cause it's stunning. It's, it's stunning graphite, guys. So it's very shiny. You can see the shine on there. So it's quite difficult with this lighting to get it. To, oh, this is terrible. Yeah, to it. not it's get it. it to shine. No, it shone just ah. now. It did shine. I, trust me, it shined. Anyway, so that's the original. So this will be a completely and utterly unique piece. This has not been done before, won't be done again. And it is the original work of Richard, uh, whose drawings usually go for significantly more money than anything we've done on here before. Uh, but what we'll also be doing as well is on the live stream tonight, we'll be auctioning number yes. one print of it as well. So Richard has very kindly this. donated this print. So this doesn't a nice shine. large print. So and I'm just this is a professionally this, this, done this, print. Laurie, it's not number one. I'll tell you why. I always keep number one. Always. But I'll tell you what this is. This is number one. It's called A 
actually it's AP2, beg your pardon, which is an artist proof. So this is literally the second print that's ever come out of the machine. And this is what you call an artist proof, and you'd usually do about five or six until you get it absolutely where you want it. So this is pretty much the first one that's come out. And if it's okay to auction this off tonight, if anybody wants okay. to bid for it. It's got to be the right money. You know how mean I am. <laughs> it's got to be big bucks, guys. It's big bucks be tonight. the first print available of Benny Boy, Ben. And uh, <laughs> it's everything to annoy Simon tonight. It's just <laughs> fun. You're going to lose. You know you're going to lose. By the end of the evening, he will have lost. He'll be a gibbering wreck by the time he walks out of here tonight at 8 o'clock. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. Get bidding, guys. And it's signed at the bottom somewhere down here. And I'm sure Simon would sign it too. Would you like They'll to pay less it? if I sign it. <laughs> Much less if I sign it. <laughs> if you win it, you can decide if you want Simon's signature on it as well. We'll leave that one up to you. <laughs> but if you would I'm like this absolutely unique artist proof, which Richard will sign, uh, please leave your bids in the comments, whether that's over on Facebook or here on YouTube. Uh, please leave those in the comments. Abby is keeping an eye on them diligently, uh, and we will keep you updated as the evening progresses as to where we're up to currently. So if someone wants to put the first bid in, feel free. At the moment it could go for anything. 5p. If you want to get it for 5p, feel free. Please leave the bid in the, the comments. Simon might shout at you for doing that though. Adam will probably bid nine pounds ninety nine, won't he? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that'll definitely be the Adam oh, bid. Possibly, yeah. <coughs> so let's let's it get this out. Honestly, beautiful. guys, I have seen this up close and personal. It is an absolutely incredible piece, it's and huge thank you uh, to, to Richard for doing close. it for us as well. Everyone needs a hedgehog Brilliant. in their life. Brilliant. So hedgehogs they are under threat. They're in trouble. Um, so any money spent on this hedgehog tonight or any of the prints that you buy from Richard's site for the hedgehog will make us money. We're going to do some merchandising with that as well. I think we're going to ask you for votes of what you'd like to see merchandise of at some point. That, that's an Abbey thing. I think we should make Abbey introduce that. Um, and Richard's also got a phone case which uh, he does of all, much of his work. So he gets these phone cases made and he gets the animals that he's drawn on them and then he sells them. So if you go to his website for this you would be able to buy a phone case for your phone. It will fit your phone um, from him. And they're, what sort of price are they, Richard, roughly? Yeah, well, they're, these, just first of all, these cases are not, they're, they're really good cases. They're rubber in the inside, and then they've got a carbon um, shell on the outside. The printing, it doesn't show us, unfortunately, on the camera, is, is amazing. And the company I use are pretty much the best in the UK. Um, and we're going to put the little hedgehog, Benny Boy, be sitting, it will be a sideways thing. It'll be sideways here. And we do every single phone, pretty much every phone they have a case for. Sometimes the phones don't have the polycarbon with the rubber, just for very bizarre phones, which are kind of pixels or something. Or, um, but they're $29.99. Um, and again, about 50% of the profit goes towards WAF for that as well, because there's a little bit of admin and not that So you say, nine, you say 90% of the profit? <laughs> there it goes. I'm sure, I, he in. I'm sure he said 90. I heard it in my ear. Oh, gee. No, no. He's, he's, he's very kindly offered. He's going to give us a much bigger profit on the prints, um, but on the phone covers, which uh, he's going to have to do all the work for it. Um, he's it's quite tricky, to give us 50 time, of that. It's time consuming yeah. to do covers. So that's another thing we can, before you get, no, not for that, sorry, you can go onto his website to buy those. Um, and anything else, but um, I think anything you buy, if you, anything you buy tonight from his website, even if it's an elephant or a tiger, if you just put WAF by it, <laughs> he'll know that he's got to give us a little thank you because it's been bought via the YouTube chat tonight. So, you know, <laughs> That's fair enough. We'll, we'll get in That's there. Otherwise, he'll never get another meal here ever again. Well, on that note, <laughs> on that uh, what note. we'll also be doing is over on our Facebook as well tomorrow, we'll be running a poll. Uh, so Benny, and I will call him Benny just because it will annoy Simon, Benny will be appearing on something else as well and it's up to you to decide what that is. So tomorrow over on our Facebook page we'll be running a poll with the four options and I've got to read them down here because I've forgotten because my memory is appalling. So it will be either mugs, tea towels, face masks or t-shirts. So if you've got any opinion on those please head on over to our Facebook poll tomorrow and make sure you leave it in there. If you would like to leave it in the comments here, please leave it here and we'll, we'll try and count those as well. And the winner of those will be going, will be becoming available on our shop as and when it gets all sorted. So uh, if you do have any other ideas, please also let us know and we'll see what we can do. 
Uh, Wendy66 has just asked, how is bidding being done? So in terms of bidding, please just leave your bids down <coughs> in the comments. So either on YouTube <coughs> or on Facebook, just leave your bids in the comments. Abby's keeping a tally at the moment. The current highest bid is Robert Bolt over on YouTube, who's bid £30, which is the current highest bid. So if you would like to beat that, uh, leave it in the comments and we'll tally up. And by the end of the evening, the top bidder will have won a rather wonderful, unique signed print. So, uh, but actually, to be honest, the prints that Richard normally sells go for around what? What sort of price do they normally go for your prints? Um, depends on the site. These are about usually between fifty to seventy-five pounds. So, so fifty to seventy is the market price. And the bigger ones about one hundred and twenty-five. And remember, this one is AP. This is an artist proof. It. This so is the artist proof, so it's actually worth a lot more than the normal print. So fifty to seventy is what you have to pay for that, but you wouldn't even get this for that price. It'd be a lot more than that. So go on guys, dig deep for the hedgehogs and uh, obviously with bonfire night tomorrow night, please keep a very close eye on your fires as I've always already said. Uh, look through it, turn it over if you can. You can actually see if you, if you go to the fire in the afternoon when it's still light, you can often see a little entrance hole, it's probably only about that big, but you'll see where they've tunnelled in. Uh, and if you do see a tunnel like that, you can be pretty damn sure there's going to be a hedgehog in there, so be very careful. And also while you're waking up, this is autumn particularly, it's autumn time now, as I found out when I spent all weekend raking up my leaves, ever so pleased with myself. I, the whole garden looked beautiful. And on Sunday night, we had massive winds. And I came down on Monday morning, and you think I hadn't done a thing. But keep the leaves, put them in a nice big pile, even if you contain them in something, but with holes in the bottom, because it's just the sort of place a hedgehog would love to go. What I do with my leaves is I sweep them all to under the hedgerows. So they all go under the hedgerows, they pile up to about, you know, at least a couple of feet. And that's ideal habitat, not only for hedgehogs, but for all sorts of wildlife and get under there. It can keep out of the coldest and the wettest times. So make use of your autumnal leaves. Um, they will be very well appreciated by lots of wildlife when it wants to keep warm later on. And it was actually quite bitter this morning. It's minus three when we got up this morning. And anybody who knows me well knows that anything under 20 and I start to shiver. Anything under 10 um, and I'm just whinging never go out of the house. And anything under one, I refuse to get out of bed. So I can see me going to hibernation all for a, day. a long winter. It's going to be a long winter this winter. It's very <laughs> chilly. <laughs> so, um, Flutterby0704 has just asked you, Richard, uh, what's the approximate size of the print? Um, this one here is... Um, it's, um, you want to, you want to <laughs> yes, Would you like a ruler? <laughs> we'll pass him a ruler. We're, we're well we prepared um, here. Yeah, I mean, I should know this off my heart. I've done this for 20 something years. Uh, this particular one is, yeah, that's right, 46 by around 30. 46, 40, 45 by 30. That's centimetres, guys. Centimetres, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> for those of you over in the 30. US, that is centimetres. So we'll you've always got to we'll remember try and with every print is when you, put a, when you put a mount around it, you know, you put a mount around it, and then you put a frame, they come up. You know, this just if you want to know roughly by the time you put a you've put a frame round, it's roughly another let's say seventy centimeters by fifty centimeters with a frame. So they come up quite big. And the hedgehog itself, the actual size of the hedgehog is about an A4 size. If you want to get an idea, the hedgehog itself is about an A4 size. So it's quite a, a, a large print. It, it's like a it's, it's like a gargantuan hedgehog, much bigger than you see them even though they can go up to sometimes one and a half kilos here. Um, but uh, he's quite a big one there. So that's, that's a large fine. hedgehog, so guys, a kilo and a half. It's a big hedgehog. Big hedgehog, big hoggy. So <laughs> dig deep for the hedgehogs, guys, dig deep. And don't forget to check your bonfires tonight and don't forget to keep your dried leaves because they'd be much appreciated. We actually keep all our dried leaves in the autumn because then we use it for bedding next summer. So we have a big stack of dried leaves. They dry off beautifully. And instead of having to use straw or un un unnatural things, we can actually use real leaves for the animals to burrow into. So I, lots of uses. Last, last, oh, wait, last year, um, I'm not very good at cleaning my leaves like Simon. I used to leave it sometimes till January, February. And I thought well, there was this pile of leaves by my front door. And I just went to pick them up, put my hand down. And I was like, oh, that hurt. Something pricked me. And uh, just moved it apart. And there was a hedgehog sleeping right outside my door, literally. And oh, I have to say, it. it was a massive, massive privilege have him there and I used to keep an eye on it and uh, one day I think it was May or something order it just disappeared but it was amazing real privilege 
So always be careful. Obviously, when you do gather up your leaves in the spring or go to move them, just watch out for hedgehogs while it's still cold. They will hibernate until probably sometimes March or even April, depending upon how cold it is. Um, with the climate changes we've been having over the last few years, they tend to go into hibernation much later. Some of them actually don't hibernate at all. We found out now that some hedgehogs now aren't hibernating at all. And we can't work out whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, because although they're not hibernating, which is good, they can keep going, are they finding enough food when they're not hibernating? Because all the grubby things they eat probably are going down, they're going out of sight a bit more. So we're still trying to work out whether a non-hibernating hedgehog is a good thing or a bad thing. And it will be a, a few years before we get an accurate gauge on that. But if you do see a hedgehog out in the winter and you're worried, um, always ring a hospital first. Don't take him straight in, just ring your local wildlife hospital for advice. We can get a bit of an idea of the scenario, why it's out, what's going on. Um, and if it's wobbling and very bad, perhaps it needs checking so you can take it to a wildlife hospital. And as I say, in very inclement weather, if you do see hedgehogs around, at least put some food out. But probably if it's that cold, um, there's something wrong with them if they haven't gone to sleep. So, and so always ring. No milk, that's correct. No Never milk. Never give them milk. Never milk. Um, it's, it's absolutely taboo. I did a, a piece on television. I said, do not give them water uh, on live television. I you meant did. to say, do not give them milk. And I said, do not give them water. So that's why I hit his head, Don. I hit, and I hit my head on a heat lamp. Yeah, absolutely. So these Great things, advice. Don't give them water. Live television is a, is a, is a very interesting thing to talk about. It bit on. you on the finger, didn't it? One of them? And I, had, I did another one. I did an interview up with um, Fern Britain. Yeah. Um, and we took, in the days, we don't do it anymore, to be honest. We won't take animals out. This was in the early days of WAF. Um, we did occasionally take an animal onto live television because they wanted to do it and it features hedgehogs and it's a bit, what do you do for the best? Um, and we used to, to be honest, and I had this big hedgehog with me, I was chatting, we were talking live, and I had it in a towel, and I wasn't obviously looking at it, I was looking at fern, and it bit me right on the finger. And if you've ever been bitten by a hedgehog, we meant it, it really does hurt. I could just feel the dri blood dripping down my fingernail onto the floor as I was trying to give a cohesive answer, which was very, very tricky at the time. <laughs> We actually, that's the and same. you didn't swear. I didn't swear <laughs> once, didn't no, swear. I didn't. And then we had a, the other interesting, we, we had a hedgehog, uh, we had a badger, badger cub with us. We don't do that anymore, I'm stressed, we haven't done this for about 20 years. But I had a badger cub with me as well, he was quite young, he was still being bottle fed. Um, but I lent him to Fern to pick it up, um, and it sits down her front. So, because I'm so used to this happening, that I just grabbed a towel and went to wipe her on the front and three massive security guards <laughs> came running towards me. I think they thought I was going to do something I shouldn't be doing. And it was just quite fascinating. I was just thinking, oh, sick, I'll wipe it off for her. Um, oh, I shouldn't have done that. So the reputation went this before is, you. This, yeah, my reputation's been, been bad for years, so, so why change your habits for a lifetime? But not as bad as Richard's reputation. His is even worse than mine. Trust me, guys, I'll show you the pictures later on. <laughs> Laurie, what so else we've have had you got for a us? bit of a bidding war that's been going on over oh. the past couple of minutes. So Wendy sixty six and Robert Bolt have been back and forth repeatedly. That went all the way up to eighty pounds, and then wow. a little known character called Sven, who everyone in this chat, maybe except Richard, but everyone in this chat will know, uh, who is a regular donor and watcher here on the channel, has given a hundred euros as a donation, and in addition to that, is bid one hundred pounds plus shipping for the print. Not to be outdone, Karen is then also bid £100 for a print as well. Wow. So the current on, prize guys. bid is at £100. So if you also, can beat that, please leave it in the comments. We are keeping an eye out on that one. It's a good starting block. <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 just say that there's I think there's I think there's ten pounds per spine. Five thousand <laughs> spines. And there's five thousand spines on here. So we we started off. You've 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 just bid on this little bit here. Well done, guys. <laughs> well, I, I just had I just had a bid here, Laurie, from our mystery lady in Leatherhead. <clears throat> She's bid fifty pounds. So mystery lady, um, I'm afraid you've got to go higher than that. Uh, I mean, 150. <laughs> it, it, it's it's a print that you could not buy, to be honest. It really is. It's well, it's it's one of a kind. It's simple as that. It's one of a kind. It's not the original original, but it's the first artist it's print. It's the first one it's worth the printer. It's called an artist's proof. So it's uh, it's it, before you you run the other prints out, which will all be so it, it'll be slightly different shading. It'll be just a little bit more unique than the other ones. I mean, to me, that's uh, got to be worth a couple note, hundred quid, isn't it? Yeah. 
It's got to be worth On that note, quid, there's been two increases in the bid. So Karen has <laughs> increased her bids to £120, and Sven oh. has increased his to 135 Keep going, guys. So All I can say to you is a bidding war. <laughs> Excellent. We need a bidding war. Keep rocking on, guys. Keep rocking on. That, so the more you before, bid now, oh. the more, more they bid now, the more Richard will be encouraged to do more British wildlife. Won't oh, you? I can feel it coming on. I can feel it coming on. <laughs> Help. <laughs> <laughs> so before we move on to how you can actually help hedgehogs, just with a couple of simple changes in your garden and the way you do things, which we will get onto in a bit, uh, we're just going to go through a couple of the questions that have come in over the past 30 minutes. So if you do have any questions for myself, for Simon, or for Richard, Leave them in the comments, either on Facebook or on YouTube, and we'll try and get through as many as we can. So the first one, from Ironics1, uh, is there a notable increase in road animal <coughs> casualties when the clocks change? Um, <clears throat> there is short term. Uh, in the winter, obviously, the animals are used to when it gets dark and the cars stop coming. They get used to that over many months. And, and then when the clocks do go in the autumn, they actually sort of fall back. Um, the animals think it's safe to come out an hour before it is actually safe and we get a noticeable increase in deer RTAs particularly when they're crossing the road uh, we've been out four or five recently the other thing I find in the winter also you get many more animals traveling when it's a full moon so either side and on a full moon three or four days either side and on the full moon itself you get much more movement of animals because obviously it's a, it's a brighter nicer night for them um, and we get a lot of increase in activity then but RTAs are always getting bigger. When we first started Wildlife Aid back in the 1980s, it was estimated that there are over 5 million wild animals killed on the roads every year just in the UK. Um, I reckon that figure now, from extrapolation and guesses and talking to lots of people, is nearer 20 million. I mean, you think of the increase in cars since the 80s, the increase in roads and all the human population. Uh, 20 million probably is not, not enough, to be honest, but nobody's done any work on that for some time very hard thing to work out it's all a mathematical equation at the end because you can't go and count them all but uh, I would say 20 million is probably accurate for the time being um, and that's pretty damn scary to be honest uh, so Annika has asked how can you lure hedgehogs into your garden um, I had a call from somebody about three or four months ago and um, they rang me up they're all excited because they've seen a hedgehog in their garden because they put some food out that hedgehog has probably been there for many years. You can have hedgehogs in your garden for years and years and years and never see them. But if you do start feeding, you'll be surprised what does come in at night. Now that's a bit of a contradiction for us because we don't advocate feeding wildlife unless there's particular reasons. A, you want to get some medication into an animal or it's in trouble or the weather's inclement, then for a very short period of time feed them. That's great. But I mean, they do come in, they pick up some of the bird seed that comes off the bird feeders. Um, so if there is a sort of bit of that sometimes you'll see hedgehogs come in but trust me you could live with hedgehogs in your garden for probably 10 years and never see them they're probably there there are hedgehogs in all areas um, they don't do so well with badgers badger is the only natural predator of the hedgehog so you know it's not so often but we do see I mean I've seen pictures I've been sent pictures of badgers and hedgehogs feeding at the same bowl so it does happen but obviously when the hedgehog if the badgers get particularly hungry and they're feeding young they will predate a hedgehog. It's about the only British mammal that can predate a fit hedgehog because they've got very long claws. They can actually open the hedgehog up because it has this reflex where it curls into a tight ball. Um, as you saw from Richard's picture, because he didn't paint it properly, he, he, he drew it with um, you know, an angle you'd never see a hedgehog. I've never seen a hedgehog sitting back in a deck chair going, hmm, here I am, I'm pretty. That doesn't happen, guys. Doesn't it's cute happen. though, isn't it, guys? It's cute, you've got to cute. admit. Might be cute, but wrong, Richard, wrong. Yeah, Some things in this world are just <laughs> wrong. Do I come and tell you what to do in your job, Mr. Cow? No, you don't. Do I? Which is why I, I didn't tell you what to do in your job. I didn't, you know, I, I do admire your art. If you want me to not admire your art, I'll do that as well. <laughs> But no, I feel honestly. like a babysitter that's just watching me get <laughs> more and more like... out of control. <laughs> yeah, but the only difference is I'm getting so old I should start needing nappies soon, so be very careful. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, so, um, there's been an increase in the bidding war as well. So, um, Karen has countered Sven's offer. It's currently at £140. And then Robert Booth has come straight... Robert Bolt, apologies, has come straight back in with £150. So £150 Yay. is the current high bid for for uh, the prince that's presumably allowed. There we go. That Richard's going to show up there. 
It's very so nearly COVID, 200 bid. We've got pounds. pounds. If you would like that very unique piece, uh, leave your bid in the comments below. Um, comments wise, uh, John has asked on Facebook, are underweight hedgehogs better to be kept outside or caught and placed in a hutch? <laughs> that depends on so many things. Um, again, if you ever get a hedgehog that you're worried about, concerned about for whatever reason, ring a wildlife hospital first. Don't just box it up really. Ring a hospital first. They'll get some more details from you. They'll work out what's going on. An underweight, underweight hedgehog this time of year, if it's under 400 grams, I would certainly recommend it comes in for at least a checkup. It might be able to go back out again. But now we're getting the frosty nights, that will encourage the, the hedgehogs to hibernate. And a hedgehog under 600 grams oh. doesn't stand a very good chance of getting through the winter. They hibernate okay, but they haven't got enough fat reserves to get through the winter and come out the other side, which is why we end up, end up overwintering sometimes 200, sometimes 400 hedgehogs. Um, and my favorite thing is each hedgehog will eat about a third of a can of food a day. So if you work that out, say 200 hedgehogs, a third of a can of food a day for 150 days, that actually comes out to well over seven tons of food. Seven tons of food um, that we feed our hedgehogs over winter. And everybody says, what odds does it make? 100 hedgehogs, 200 hedgehogs, it's pointless. We actually spent a long time working out the numbers. Uh, one of our uh, brilliant volunteers, who's a bit of a, a math genius, sat and spent months working out, taking in all the mortality factors, accidents they have, and everything else. And we worked out for every 100 hedgehogs we release a year, there were potentially 35,000 more hedgehogs in 10 years' time. So, you know, you say 100 doesn't make a difference. If every centre released 100 hedgehogs in 10 years' time, you'd actually get the population sort of beginning to go back up to where it should be. So, yeah, just think of that. Every 100 hedgehogs can produce 35,000 hedgehogs within 10 years. So it all starts to add up, which is why it's so vitally important and why our volunteers bravely mop up seven tons of hedgehog poo over the <laughs> oh, I've got. I've got to say that hedgehog you, you gave me for the weekend, I couldn't believe how much poo that little thing, it was, wasn't a very big one. It crapped for England, basically. It was horrendous. It really was. So I should have brought my bleeper machine for England. For England. Oh uh, yeah, no they do. They have a, I just, if we could find a market for hedgehog poo, I'd be a wealthy man. <laughs> Um, we are drifting in out of focus, guys. Now I've gone out of focus. Simon's Richard's gone back into focus. Out of focus. Yeah, leave him out of Maybe focus. I've gone yeah, soft focus. Yeah, yeah. Leave him. You're talking too much. Ooh. <laughs> okay, we can stop that. What else do you want to talk about, Laurie? Uh, last couple of questions before we move on. We will get back to them as well. Just to say, another bid. Karen has come back in and has now bid £160. So £160 hey. is currently the, the high bid for the print. If you think Thank you, you Karen. That, please leave it in the we comments. We can go another 40 in the next, what's that, 15, 20 yeah, minutes? Yeah, we can go 40 back. We can get another a 200. Get the 200. We've, 200. Got a little, we've got a little surprise if you get to the 200. <laughs> So, uh, Carlos has asked, have you ever had to rescue a sea animal, like a seal? Uh, we have been out to sea animals. We've been out to sea animals which get themselves into trouble on the Thames when they get stuck in a lock or go the other side of a lock. We've helped with those a few times. We have actually, well, I, when I've been abroad, I've helped with seals um, and rescued seals. They've got a very big bite. And when I went out to South Africa, I was actually tube feeding seals, which is an interesting experience because you get a, a grown-up seal being careful not to get bitten. You get it sort of standing up between your legs. You then pour about two pints of herring gloop. You liquidise the herring. You put it in a big jug, which you have to hold in your teeth. You have to hold the funnel in your teeth. A funnel in your teeth. Pour the stuff in there so it's right next to your nose. It goes down the tube and into the seal. And they're very appreciative. But the smell as you pour that stuff in. I I've seen nice. Stanny feed you like that. Yeah. Your, yeah. your girlfriend. I've yeah. seen Stanny. That's how Simon's that's fat. I've seen it. That's only with Bacardi, though. <laughs> Bacardi, yes. I apologise to anyone who is eating during that <laughs> loving yeah. description of how to feed a seal. But sadly, that is how you have to do that. If we put you off your dinner, I apologise. Uh, so, last question before we move on for a bit. Marcel has asked, what bedding should you put in a hedgehog house? Um, leaves, dried leaves, to be honest. Um, that's what they would do in the wild. They get old bits of dried grass, they get the longer bits of grass, and if you see them, they sort of gather it all up in their mouths, rush it back into the house. But it's leaves, long dried grass, anything like that, anything dry, really, not too wet, 
and they'll drag it in. It's like badgers, they will drag their bedding in between their front feet and their back feet. And I think the thing that always fascinates me is when we have our badgers in, when they come in when they're really tiny, so they're hardly eyes open, they've never seen mum do it, they come in here because they're suddenly orphaned for some reason or got away from their mum, and yet when they get to a certain size, probably about June, you see them at night busy rushing around, collecting up bedding, dragging it back into the bed, taking the old bedding out, and they've never seen it happen, so it's absolutely instinctive. It's all sort of in, it's all in, inborn in them, as they say, John, inborn. Richard's got a finger waving uh, in the air. Miss, oh. can, miss, <laughs> miss, can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? I actually, I, yeah, just, of course. Having drawn one of these little guys now and seeing all those pictures you just put up, are they, what are the spines made of? Are they keratin? Are they the same as our... This is, I wanna, come on, one of you. One day. Do you know what it is? Seriously, is I it, do know what it is. You do know what it is. But <laughs> I, I've always known what wow. it is. And Ricky Gervais once asked me on a, a, okay. a live stream, he asked what it was, and my brain went blank, absolutely blank. So knowing, as a good TV presenter as I am, if you say a big bad swear word on television, they have to cut it out. <laughs> so I went, oh, Ricky, thinking they cut it out. He immediately turned away from me, looked straight down the lens of the camera, and went, Simon Cowell is just like David Attenborough with Tourette's. <laughs> and it was so funny, we had to leave it in, so I had to bleep out my swear word. Leave his comment in, but yeah, it's the same as your fingernails. It's so it's exactly the same. Yeah, exactly the same. So it's just like a rhino, yeah. rhino yeah. horn. Or rhino horn. All beans. these things. Right. But luckily, we don't sell them for aphrodisiacs in this country. Interesting, isn't it? It is fascinating. Just a piece of useless dead nail. Hmm. If anyone wants to see that, we actually do have uh, a part of Ricky's interaction with Simon on our YouTube channel as well. One of our earliest videos. So if you can find it, enjoy, because that's quite a fun one. So, um, just taking a break for our questions just for the time being, moving to the next segment of things, which is more one for you, Simon. So, what can we do to help hedgehogs? There, we could be here for five hours doing this. Um, I will say one thing which just went into my mind actually as we were talking, if you do have a garden which has got either chain link fence, particularly chain link fence, but, or, or, or uh, chicken netting, as you see on that picture there at the moment, just walk around your garden, ideally once a day. Just have a wander around the garden, close to the ground, <coughs> and you'll be surprised how many animals get stuck in that, but particularly hedgehogs, because they get their heads through, but they can't get the rest of the body through, so they try to go backwards, they can't, because the chain link fence sort of hits against the back of the, of the spines, um, and a lot of hedgehogs die that way. So if you've got any sort of fences like that, please, please, please try and check your fence or get your children to check the fence, give them 20 p a day to check your fences for hedgehogs. They are nice in inducement for them to go wandering around the garden, gives them a bit of fresh air, <coughs> lets them look for wildlife and uh, they get paid for doing it. That's really like an IDOP lorry but we won't go into IDOP tonight too much <laughs> but it's a bit like an IDOP. So yeah lots of things. If you have an enclosed garden with uh, wooden fences just cut a little hole in the fence. It only needs to be about 15 centimetres round so not even fully round just as a little, little arch they can get through that, they can go into the next garden, and if you get all your neighbours to do the same thing, um, Richard is now playing. This is my favourite t-shirt Laurie bought me. I dot, I dot, I dot, food chain. That's what I spend my life saying. But yeah, so if you can cut a hole for your hedgehogs, they can get in to visit another hedgehog or visit out further. As Laurie said, they can go up to a mile a night, but it's certainly a couple of football courses, uh, football pitches at least a night. And in the mating season, the males will travel a lot a lot further than that to find somebody a lot prettier than Richard and Laurie. So, you know, they will travel like that. You're not that yeah, pretty. There's a lot that's prettier <laughs> than me, so that's not a particularly <coughs> difficult one. So, yeah, there's, there's lots of other things as well. I mean, if you've got big gullies in your garden with sheer walls, obviously just put a plank down, like if you've got a garden pond which has got steep walls, put a plank down into the water, a sawn rough plank or even a plank with a little bit of towel on it, Give them an escape route because we went out actually i think it was last year laurie wasn't it to one that got stuck behind it's about a nine inch gap two brick walls either side of it about two foot high and it would have died there it couldn't have got out no way they can climb quite well they can climb up vegetation they could climb over a fence if it was had ivy up against it or something but they can't climb up something they, sheer like that they can't swim they can swim hedgehogs can swim can they? yeah i always see that you know those ponds you get that very I don't know what it's called, that weed that just looks completely green, so you, can't, you wouldn't even know there was, yeah. you know what I mean, those tiny yeah. little, little things. I always wonder how many hedgehogs think it's grass. Duckweed. It's duckweed. duckweed. 
Um, but yeah, the, the, they can they can swim, but they can't get up a very steep bank. So again, have some vegetation down there, have a shallow bit where they can get out onto gravel, or as I say, a plank with with some um, towel on it or something so they can climb up. The other thing as well with hedgehogs, uh, if they do fall in a pond or go into water, they tend to hug the bank and swim around. So if you have a ramp, don't put it directly into the middle of the pond because they won't often find it. Try and put it along the edge of it so that as they follow the bank round, they will meet the ramp and then can come out. We've had that trip up uh, a few unlucky hedgehogs as well actually. So if you are going to do that, do. please make sure it's on the edge of the pond. If you make a ramp like that, so it goes so both sides are available it can go up either side so if it's swimming one way or the other way it can find its little ramp up and onto the ground so dead easy to make not very complicated won't take you long um, i'm sure you'll be able to help them a few people in the comments are mentioning slug pellets and that is another big one as well so slug pellets contain something called metaldehyde uh, or certainly they used to there is a law coming in here in the uk that's banning that but that's not coming in uh, until next year i believe it did come in and then was redacted and now it's coming in again but slug pellets are devastating to hedgehogs so if you put the slug boating. pellets out it might kill the slugs but unfortunately a hungry hedgehog will come along will eat the slugs and it's a process called bioaccumulation. So they'll eat a number of slugs and all of the poison that's in those slugs will build up to the point that it's actually toxic to the hedgehog. And we end up, I, I'm just gonna work through this. I, I work with children. I apologize for being apparently the most mature person here. Uh, but it will build up right up to the point that the hedgehog will get poisoned. And we have had hedgehogs in that have been poisoned from slug pellets from eating the slugs. And it's not just hedgehogs, it's owls, it's foxes, a whole load of other things. So please, please, please avoid slug pellets at all costs. There are much, much better ways of doing things. Things like coffee grouts will do. You can get, uh, I think it's called slug gone or something like that. It's little woolen pellets that work very well um, put round plant pots, but please avoid slug pellets. Same thing with rat poison as well. Same thing will happen. He does drum his points home, doesn't he? He drums good, them and drums he's them and drums them. I've been good. taught by him. He's good. I don't know anything, Gloria. You couldn't <laughs> have learned from me. I know nothing. <laughs> no. I know nothing, my love. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, slug pellets, bad news. There are other things you can do for getting slugs. And of course, well, hedgehogs are the ultimate slug killer, aren't they? I mean, you get hedgehogs, they are. Them, they're going to get yeah. rid of the slugs. I mean, they're going to get rid of the slugs. It's slug. ironic. It's ironic, but one thing you want to get rid of are the slugs, but you're going to kill the hedgehogs, they're going to get rid of the slugs. It's like... And, and it's not only hedgehogs, obviously, you know, if, if a slug itself eats the slug bait, which is what it's there for, and a bird eats the slug, exactly the same thing, it travels up through the food chain yeah. and causes the secondary host to die. So, yeah, guys, don't use it. Please, 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 get yourself a hedgehog. He'll do all the work and not charge you half the amount of money that you pay for slug pellets. End of story. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, few people asking, what is that beeping? That, I believe, is Simon's phone going off with messages. So we are still on call, um, so any queries or anything like that are coming through. Unfortunately, we do need to keep phones on loud, just in <coughs> case we do need to go. So uh, stop press, stop press, going. stop press. It was my phone. It was a text message bidding £200 for the hedgehog print. Hey. It's there, it's genuine, it's real, look at that. I can't read that. <laughs> uh, £200 for hedgehog print, guys. Wow. So. Thank you, Old mystery Matt lady Lilt, in Leatherhead. We've also had Karen, yeah. who has upgraded her bid to two hundred pounds as well. So that's two bids wow. for two hundred pounds. So over to you, Mr. Simmons. Happy hedgehog. So are we? Is that yes? Because we're wrapping up. Okay. No, can... we're not. No, we've got loads. No, of time. no, we're not wrapping up. Again. We're not wrapping up. We're going to sell ten of these at two hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to keep going until we get ten sold at two hundred pounds. It, it was hinted earlier that if we hit £200, which we have, okay. there would be a special announcement. Well, the special announcement is uh, that I have two prints here, two artist proofs, and we said if we could get it to £200 or plus, the two people at the highest bids could each have one. Does that make sense? We could now say it was stops at 200 we can give the other person that said 200 rather than one person lose out. You can both have a print for 200 and we get 400 for the hedgehogs tonight. That was the, so I was a bit cheeky. There is a second artist proof down here, or down there or over here. <laughs> and, and, and running a charity as I do, you know, you know we need to get the money in. Um, if Richard needs to find another 10 artist proofs, I'm sure he can be <laughs> persuaded to find them. 
Uh, Robert Bolt has just actually upgraded his bid as well to two hundred and ten pounds. Oh so yes, Robert on. is currently the the winning bid at two hundred and ten pounds. <coughs> Uh, and then we have two bids for 200 in contention for the second print. So that would be Sven and Karen. Uh, wow. No, uh, the mystery lady and Karen, actually, who have all bid £200. So currently <laughs> 210 to beat on that one. 210 to beat, and we have 10 minutes to do it in. <laughs> so, uh, back to how you can help hedgehogs. The other thing to watch out for, anyone who has a garden that tries to maintain it, please be aware if you're using a strimmer. So strimmers, uh, they're called strimmers in the UK. They're usually called weed whackers or weed eaters over in the US and Canada, I believe. You might have your own name for them. They're the, the little garden power tools with a spinning wire that you use to cut uh, the edges of your lawn. Unfortunately, every single year, we get hedgehogs that have been very unlucky and have been caught by a strimmer. And it can cause absolutely horrible injuries. Massive. A lot of them nasty, nasty. do end up as something that we can't save. Uh, we do try. We've had major, major wounds that have been able to be sewn up, but quite often it can lead to spinal paralysis, or it, if, especially if it hits around the face area, the damage is absolutely uh, horrific. So please, if you are going to use a strimmer, check the area that you are going to strim before you do so. Just make sure there's no hedgehogs, there's no rabbits, there's nothing else that you can accidentally strim over. No one ever intends to do it, but unfortunately, it's something we see all the time. So please do check. Have you got anything I'm else to add, this, Mr. Cow? I th was, there's probably lots of things to be honest, but it's just it's just give wildlife some thought. I mean, you, we're lucky enough to be able to go out in our gardens and see these amazing creatures, um, and we're just about in UK now to go into another lockdown. And you'd be surprised. Just spend ten minutes one day sitting at your window watching outside see what's going on you'll still see birds and animals around you they're still doing crazy things sometimes um it's such a it's a relaxing thing too it does it calms you right down and you will get a lot of pleasure from it you'll see what comes into your garden what's coming in to eat and drink and doing all sorts of things we actually have quite a lot of trail cams up at night and you can see what comes to your pond at night and you'd be amazed you have a trial cam up by your pond at night and see all the animals that come to it to drink we've even seen an owl swoop down once and have a bath in the waterfall of ours. So, you know, you'll never know what you're going to see. Fascinating. Enjoy it, guys. We're lucky to have it. Um, and if we all, you know, if the panic goes on as it is, it might not be that much longer that we do have it because we're trying to annihilate everything, including ourselves. But we won't get too deep on this conversation. <laughs> we'll just keep the hedgehog prints getting bid higher and higher yes. for. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So Karen has joined the bidding war once again has put Robert behave I bid £220 so currently £220 is the winning bid so for the two prints we have Robert who's on 210 and Karen who's on 220 so if you do want one of the two artist proofs that Richard is very very kindly donating to us please leave your comments in the comments either on YouTube or on Facebook and uh, we'll see what we can do on that one are you going to leave uh, this running a bit longer or are you going to end the bid? I mean, do you want to leave the bidding? Because presumably people we, watch this not live. They might want to bid. Is it something you want to leave for another 24 hours? or? No, it's, we're going to do it as soon as we finish this. That will be it. So That's the, it. Okay. the highest bidder at the end of this live stream. And Robert has just equaled Karen's £220. So I think it's we can £220 get to pounds for both prints. We can get to 250. I know, I have every faith in people's love for hedgehogs, love for Richard, and disregard of me that they'll bid 250 pounds. I can see it coming on so clearly. Which would be 500 pounds, don't forget, because we're gonna put the two prints out. If you could both do 250, that would be 500 quid. That's all right, isn't it? That's not bad. Feed a lot of hedgehog hedgehogs. Uh, so a few My more questions have come in. Uh, uh, Christine sorry, has another asked, bit of oh. Laurie, uh, mystery lady has just gone to two twenty, so she's only got to That's get to three two twenty. Yeah, so she's gone to two twenty, and I know if I smile really nicely, my biggest smile. Richard, can you give mystery lady a smile? Give her your big best smile. No smile. <laughs> <laughs> See, oh, I know. Richard. I know we can push her to two fifty. I know she'll go come there. On, please, I have every please, faith. Please. <laughs> Thank you very much for everyone who has bid. That is absolutely incredible. Also, a huge thank you to those of you who have been leaving super chats uh, over the course of this chat. 
huge, big, huge thank you. We'll go through a few of those. So Utah, right just when we opened up, donated 20 euros. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Airless donated 10 pounds. Katie's done 79 pence. Uh, Robert Bolt donated 10 pounds. He's also in the running for the print. So thank you very much, Robert. Uh, Penilla has donated 200 Swedish krona. Sven, of course, has donated 100 euros. Thank you so much to you, Sven, once again. Flutterby0704 has donated £2.99 and has put thank you for raising awareness for our hoblets. Thank you very much for uh, supporting our raising awareness on that one. Uh, and the Warren has donated €15 Euros and has put I've received my flying otter and Simon's kind message. Thank you very much. Glad it arrived there okay. Hope you enjoy it and thank you very much for your support. I'm feeling quite ill now because it lo looks like we've got a hedgehog being tossed around on the waves. <laughs> it's making me feel quite seasick. <laughs> Uh, so, questions-wise, uh, Christine over on Facebook, do slugs and snails give hedgehogs worms or fluke? Um, hedgehogs, like all wild animals, have a certain parasite uh, loading. They have a tolerance to these loadings as well. I mean, any wild animal has a certain amount of fleas. I mean, even Richard, who's quite wild, has, has his fair share of fleas. Um, but they tolerate it. I mean, sometimes if some of these, the lung worm or something gets very bad, they come in because they're coughing a lot, it's easily curable, but normally the sort of load doesn't, doesn't down a, a, an animal too much. They can no normally cope with it unless they get ill as well and then it starts to bring them down. Um, we have to actually dose Laurie a couple of times a year um, <laughs> in case he catches something he shouldn't do. I, I did get a flea fly. bite the other day from a fox. <laughs> did you? Lovely. There's, a, there's one <laughs> thing that I know Simon hates and it's a fly. A flat fly. A flat fly. Flat fly. He oh, hates everybody them. hates flat flies. <laughs> Every, everybody runs. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Abby is particularly bad. She's <laughs> filming something, and there's a flat fly. You get this scream. I saw this guy. This guy. He Everyone's was literally screamed. running, running down the path. I thought, what a wimp! What a wimp! And then I got the flat fly on me, and I completely understand. It got it got into my car, you can and I feel found them. it two weeks later. This thing, because I bought a blackbird in here or something, didn't I? And he saw the flat fly come out of it. This guy, honestly, I, I've never seen him run so fast. They just because you can brush them off like that, and uh, they don't move. They don't go. They sit tight. Yeah. They're terrible. He was walking around in my car oh. two weeks. <laughs> Not good. So flat uh, flies are to be avoided, guys. A few more comments. Uh, Sculptor over on YouTube has asked, can a hedgehog scale basement stairs? Last year I found five hedgehogs in total stranding in a building's basement. Um, I'm just trying to get my bids up here. I'm, I'm working hard <laughs> on my telephone trying to get the bids up. Um, Speaking of bids, question again. Both, both Robert and Karen have upped their bids to 230 pounds. So 230 oh, pounds. 250 guys. 250. I'm going to bid 245 in a minute. I'm going to bid 245, and then they'll have to go to 250. What was the question, Laurie, again? <laughs> Can a hedgehog scale basement stairs? Uh, last year, I found five hedgehogs in total stranded in a building's basement. If they're stranded, they'll never get back up. I mean, they, they can climb up. If it's a slight incline and it's quite rough, they can probably get up it, but something sheer they cannot get up at all. So again, it's the old plank of wood or something. What two fifty on that sort of case? Sorry, my, my telephone bid's gone to two fifty. Uh, yes, it's it's probably not wise to show your phone screen on the camera, considering this is held. They in can't see it that clear. Far too far. But two fifty is the bid. So that's not too bad. Now, okay. So what was the so yeah? We've done that one, haven't we? Basements. No, they can't scale up vertical walls. Yeah. They're going to get stuck there. What will often happen on stairs is they'll actually sort of walk but fall down the stairs. Um, they'll do that over sort of raised trellises and things like that as well. It's how they can end up in drains and things like that. They'll just sort of fall off the edge. So unfortunately, that's probably how that one happened. Uh, Linda over on YouTube has put, Simon, my eye dot this week, you'd like this, is repurposing like a ton of cardboard and putting, it, uh, putting in a tiny wildlife meadow corner in her backyard. What kind of plants would wildlife like to find out there? Wildlife friendly plants. I can say that from <laughs> the heart of my bottom. Any wildlife friendly plants would be gratefully appreciated and don't ask me what they are, but they're pretty ones. Some aren't so pretty, some are a bit thistly, and um, the only one who's going to know the answer to that, because he is a bit encyclopedic, is Laurie. Laurie. So Laurie, if you can't answer this, this will be our last laugh on you. Sorry, is it too 
<laughs> so I'm on the we, we tend to say there's a lot of um, plants. Wildflowers tend to be quite good for um, attracting animals. If you want bees, things like alliums and things like that. Uh, small sort of round purple flowers, absolutely amazing for attracting bees. The best way to do it, if you do head down to your garden centre, obviously with lockdown you might not be able to do that, but if next time you can go down to your garden centre, if you walk into the outdoor section, have a look around, see which plants the bees are attracted to, um, and go for those. It's the same thing with butterflies. Butterflies, the main one is usually budlier. If you've got a budlier tree as well, try and make it the, the native one rather than the um, the the... Uh, farmed one, or I'm not sure what the other one is. I think the native one is the slightly lighter colour of the two, uh, but that will attract butterflies as well. So that would probably be my recommendation on that one. And particularly lavender, which is lovely for us to smell as well, but bees absolutely swarm around our lavender plants all year. And they're there right through to October, they were still, still going for the lavender plants. So that's a good one to plant and very smelly and nice too, it very is. Very nice, very nice. Nice <laughs> under your pillow as well, uh, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> More bids better. have come in. Karen has upgraded her bid to £250. And oh, Carlos yeah, has come on, in from wait. nowhere with another bid for £250. So currently that's wow. three bids we've got for £250 in at the moment. Okay, guys. So, so we just want the fourth one now. Richard, this, we want the fourth one. Okay, I tell you now, if I've only got the two here, I will do another two artist proofs. All right. If we can, all, if we can get four bidders basically to £250. That means we've got a thousand pounds tonight. You could always have one bidder bidding for two at two fifty each. One bidder could buy it. one for a Christmas present for his Don't beloved. Don't push it, Simon. For his friend. Don't push it. He does if that, push it. If you're happy to do it, guys, the other he two prints, the other two prints won't be available maybe for another week or two because of my printer, because of lockdown over here. But we, he is still going to be printing for me. But we're going to be doing the orders to. But that does mean we could have raised a thousand pounds tonight. We can get four bidders for two hundred and fifty quid. I think that's good, yeah. So Robert, pounds. it is over to you, because currently we have three. I think Robert is uh, potentially going to be the fourth one on that one. So if you would like that, Robert, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, A. Jackson on YouTube has asked, out of curiosity, what's the rarest animal you've rescued, Simon? Oh, I really always ask this question. I think that it's an iguana, probably, which we shouldn't be rescuing anyway because they're not British, but nobody would go out to it. It was very high up on, in a conifer tree. And this was when I was young, Laurie, and I actually climbed the conifer tree myself, which was quite brave oh. of me. And then I got up to it, and it whacked me with its tail. And if you've ever been whacked by a tail of one of those, it really hurts. It's like a... It was only about long, wasn't it? It was only a small one. No, it was about that long. Quite long. Really long. Um, no, it did. But we got it down, and we got it out. So that was probably one of the unusual animals that I've rescued. Um, I just love rescues which, which make us work. I mean, I think... We, did we put that one out the other day with the ladle, Laurie? Uh, yes, we rescue. did. Yeah, that went so out it, yesterday. Is it, it's when you do a rescue like that where you've no idea how you're going to get the animal. You look at it, you look where it is, <coughs> and um, I use a soup ladle. I improvise with a soup ladle, and Laurie's getting his drunken hedgehog out again. Not Laurie, Richard. He's getting his drunken being hedgehog eaten by out. by a hedgehog. Yes. Look, he's just saying, please buy four of us. Please buy four of us because then we can eat in the winter Please. and we're going to get very hungry unless you feed Please. us through the winter and a thousand pounds would be lovely. Oh, oh. And my name is Ben. Robert has just come in. Okay, I will ben. go with it. It's for ben. a brilliant cause. 250 pounds. That's four 250 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank Rock you on. so, thousand so much. Pounds, guys. Absolutely thousand incredible. Pounds. Thank Absolutely you, Robert. Incredible. Thank you. Well, I've really got to thank Richard for that because he's now made £995 and he gives us a £500. <laughs> right. And he thinks he's going to get away with that. He's got another thing coming. Don't believe him. He gets every penny. That's amazing. A uh, Scottish astronomer has just joined us as well. Uh, has put, Sorry I couldn't join in until now. Hope this helps. And has donated £25. So a huge thank you to you thank once you. again. Uh, she's a regular watcher of this channel as well. So thank you very much, uh, Scottish astronomer. So we've still got books to sell. We've got the two books I did. One is my autobiography, which is terribly boring, but it will guarantee to put you to sleep in seven minutes. Um, Do you want to know how we started? Christmas. Signed copies of that for Christmas. And we've got Owl's Dream, or the Hedgehog with the Hog, the, 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 the Owl with the Golden Heart. Um, he always great gets that children's right. book. Oh. Great to read at Christmas time for your children, or you get your children to read it to you. Sign that one as well for Christmas. And you don't know this yet, Simon. I, I run a little photography club. We've got 
670 members. It's a just local thing I do. And Laurie helps out with me that. We're doing a calendar and we're going to judge it tonight. And we're going to get about three, four hundred pounds from that to you as well on orders that we've already had. So it hasn't been a bad night, night really. Keep has give, it, guys? give, thank give, you give. To everyone give. at Snap It. That's very, very kind. Everyone at Snap It. If you are watching us at Snap It, thank you guys. We're going to judge for pictures after this. And all the money that we're going to raise from the calendars, thanks to Rob Heaney, who's put this together, I must say, we're going to be sending all the money over to uh, Simon here at Wildlife Aid. So thank you guys for that. Now I'm going to round off a bit, Laurie, now because we're over the top. I'm going to say, firstly, next year, probably a bit late this year, please think about buying silent fireworks because it will make a lot of difference to not only your pets, my daughter's dog, absolutely goes ballistic at fireworks. He's 10 years yeah, old ballistic. and he's terrified of them, even at 10 years old. So think about buying silent fireworks next year. We've got to say very happy to the oldest person I know in the entire world, who's Ron, one of our volunteers. He's been with us for, I think, over 20 years now. Um, he he really, has. He is an old reprobate. There he is, <laughs> always smiling, always he's out He's gonna kill me for that. So Ron, there you are. Happy birthday for Happy tomorrow, birthday, mate. Ron. We've got to say a shout out to Myra, who's had to isolate because she's got um, some relations who are quite vulnerable and they've got to have an operation, so she can't come and see us. But she will still be taking any orphan creatures we get because she's like that. Um, and just to tell anybody who was thinking of volunteering, we've had to suspend again um, our volunteer applications while we're in shutdown. It's a real pain because we just got it going again. We just got a few volunteers in. And now we've got to stop it down again. So anybody who's already in is fine, but we can't do any more. Um, I've got to have a big wild thought. Tell me about a big wild thought, Laurie, so I've no idea what this is about at all. <laughs> it's a big wild thought. Uh, we've partnered up with the company called Big Wild Thought, uh, and we have a range of shirts, t-shirts, jumpers, uh, with various bird designs on them. So if you are very interested in checking those out, we have a couple of different ones. And in, in addition to that, we have a Christmas mallard that is coming out very, very soon. Uh, but if you would like to have a look at any of those, the proceeds do actually go to help us here at Wildlife Aid. Please check those out at bigwildthought.co.uk on that one. Amazing, and we've course have got our very own personally shot 2021 wildlife calendar by Laurie and Abby. Some great pictures in there. Abby's, of course, are much better than Laurie's. Um, oh, there we are. Lovely. All of the out of focus ones are mine. Yeah, <laughs> I noticed that. I wasn't going to say anything, but so that's true. So that's for sale, guys. Lovely. Again, a nice little Christmas present, not too expensive. Um, I think that must bring us about to the end of it, Laurie, doesn't it? Yes, yes. A huge thank you to everyone who has tuned in over the past hour and eight minutes. That is absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. Special thank you to the four highest bidders who each bid £250 for a print. A grand total of £1,000. Absolutely incredible. So, Carlos, um, this mystery lady, Robert and Karen, if you could send over an email to media, M-E-D-I-A, at wildlifeaid.org.uk, uh, we shall sort that out for you. So if you didn't get that before, it's Please, media, M-E-D-I-A, at wildlifeaid.org.uk, and we'll try and get that sorted as soon as we can. Fantastic. Guys, thanks so much. Thanks very much to Richard for coming in. He is a star, and we look forward to his next British wildlife picture, which will be coming very soon, I'm sure. And uh, well, think of the money it raised. Think of the money it raised for us. You can't knock it. Uh, thanks to Laurie and Abby, as always, who are always there. Abby managed to avoid her guest appearance tonight. Abby, Abby. Come on, no, Abby. Abby. Quick Abby. smile for Richard. Abby. There you go. You can have the dark silhouette. The little the wave. Silhouette. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> Super, guys. Thank you all so much. Thank you for coming to watch as well. Thank you for being with us. Always ask us questions. Always come and ask us anything you want, not only on the live stream, but send us an email if you've got any specific thing you want to know, any questions you want. Buy the books. Buy the calendars. Thank you for buying the Hedgehog pictures. The normal ones can be bought on Richard's site um, probably quite soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're not the artist ones. The phone covers, if you want those, come up with your ideas for what we're going to do on the merchandising because Richard very kindly has let us use this image um, anywhere we want. So it's going to either be on T-shirts or mugs or something. So, Box yeah, shorts. guys, you're all brilliant. We're going to go now because we've outstayed our welcome as we always do. <laughs>